In this week's video, I create the biggest diorama I've ever built, a fire-breathing dragon that used up 19 prints and a total of 275 hours of printing time. Welcome to the Scale Model Geek, and like I said, this is one huge project. This is just the head of the dragon, and I got this uh, 3D file from Loot Studios. Now this comes as a bonus uh, item from a big pack that they do. And like the rest of the things they produce, the detail is absolutely wonderful in this dragon. Lucky for me, the 275 hours of total printing time was actually cut in half, because I actually have two Anycubic printers. There are so many parts I have to put together. But I think it's going to be worth it in the end. First thing I need to do is clean up all the supports. Because Lucido absolutely loves putting supports in everything. Which is actually a good thing. On most of the parts I actually just did use uh, super glue. And you can see just the body size there how big this thing's going to be. The body and the midsection of the neck. And there we have the head. The total wingspan of the dragon is going to be 600 millimeters, so yeah, it's huge. The majority of the joints in the dragon were actually really, really good. So some minor filling for the body, I'm using some of this baking powder mixed in with some resin and turning into a bit of a creamy paste and then with the brush just applying it to the joint and to quickly harden it, a UV torch. Very simple process. I just find it a lot easier to use than actual uh, filler. Now, I did have a bit of an issue here, a misprint, which was the only misprint I had, which is great. And to fix that up, I'm just using some of these two-part epoxy ribbon. Now, I just cut off approximately how much I need. Then you need it to um, activate it so it actually starts to harden. And you stick it on and shape it. Again, very simple to do. There it is with a bit of undercoat. All hard as a rock. For a change, I was kind of trying to think ahead on this one. Because I knew it was going to be quite cumbersome once I put the wings on there. So I figured if I just glue the body and the legs together, when it comes to painting, it'll be a lot easier to get into the nooks and crannies of the build. Slowly coming together and it's huge. Every time I look at it, I just can't believe the size of it. and the tail section, which came in uh, three parts. Now it's time to actually assemble these wings. Unfortunately, I did have an issue with the wings. I had a bit of warping during the print. I have no idea why they warped. So if there's any experts out there, let me know in the comments. Let me know how to fix this issue with warping. I think also if I spend a bit more time on the actual assembly sequence of the wings, that may have fixed up a few of the issues as well. Luckily, it's not a big problem to fix. So I used some of that two-part epoxy ribbon again and just rolled them up into little sausages, filled it in, then pushed it in with some tools, and this filled in the major gaps in the wings. With the smaller gaps, I was able to use some of that mixture of the baking powder and the resin once again. Now I also went over all the seams just to smooth them out a bit. After all that, this is how good it looks. With the techniques that I used, I was able to retain the texture in the wings, which was really good. That's a good thing. Now, off camera, I actually used some of this flat grey primer. And then I went in with some of this brown from rust -Oleum. And because I kept the body and the wings separate, I was able to get a really good coat of this uh, undercoat and also that brown. Now, to assemble the wings, I'm just using some of this 5-minute aerodite. But first, I'm just adding a bit of super glue to the edges. And that's simply when I attach the wings, they stick very quickly. And then I can just leave it alone and let the five minute uh, aerodite cure. I then filled in the final gaps with that resin mix that I had. 
I use a mix of this German red and the US Earth Yellow as a base coat for my underbelly. Well, not my underbelly, the dragon's underbelly. With all my painting, I like to block in the base colours in first before I start detailing. Now, I thought I would actually weather up the dragon a little bit, so I use a combination of these two acrylic colours, the brown and the black, and thinned it down quite heavily with water and gave it a nice even wash. And if you haven't already, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Would love your support. When I do washes, I like to do them in small sections at a time just to give me more control of the actual final finish. I'm just using a makeup sponge to dab up the excess. And that's the result. And that's aged the dragon really nicely. I was really happy with the final mottled look that I got out of the wash. Come up really nice. Now to start detailing those colours, I'm using some of this earth from Ammo. And I'm doing a fairly heavy dry brush over the underbelly. And for the lighter areas, some of this dark sand. And this is a much lighter dry brush, just hitting the top ends of the scales. And you can see it's really giving me this dry finish to the actual dry brushing. It feels old and dried up. And for the rest of the dragon, I used a combination of this chipping and earth from Ammo. And I did put a couple of drops of red into that mixture as well. And then hit all the raised areas with the dry brushing technique once again. With the wash and the dry brushing, you can see it's really knocked back the redness of the original base colour. It's looking great. We we'll still need to add a bit more detail. I've got this gold leaf from Tamiya and I'm hitting all those little horny things and giving a bit of a dry brush. And I'm using the gold simply to add a bit of visual interest and still kind of stay within the colour palette. And for the inside of his mouth, I'm using some of this smoke and clear red from Tamiya. I have this really cool bent brush that I made from a previous diorama and it's come out to be very, very handy on jobs, especially to get into tight areas. For the teeth, I just used a base sand colour. And a bit of dry brushing with this light sand over the top of it. And off camera, I fixed up his broken horn. Even though he's looking really, really good, I think I can still bring out some more detail. So I'm using this panel line accent colour. It's black from Tamiya. And it's like a really thin wash and it just creeps through all the recessed areas. And with the dragon all done, it's time to move on to the base. Now I did print up the original base from the 3D files that I got from Loot. But I am going to modify it and the reason I did print it up is because I needed the strength for the dragon to actually stand on. The first thing I needed to do was get rid of all these crystal things that are in the base. And I've got my vacuum cleaners sucking up all that dust created by my Dremel tool. Please do wear a mask. And all those leftover crystals I think will come in very handy in a future build. And this bit is the area that the dragon actually stands on. Now I've got my base created by a picture frame and some XPS foam. And I want to build that up so it looks like a cliff. And to hold all the pieces in place, I'm just using some PVA glue. Also known as wood glue or craft glue. Now I've got the basic shape there. Just to hold it all in place while the glue dries, I'm actually creating some clips or pins out of this wire. And then I removed the dragon and added a whole bunch of smaller bits and pieces to give me a rough shape of what I actually need. Making allowances for the curving towel as well. Once I left that overnight to dry, pulled out the pins and I was ready to start shaping everything. Starting off with this uh, box cutter. I started roughing in the shape of uh, what I need. And this process is a bit of trial and error. You chop out a piece and make sure it suits, then chop out another piece. Once I was happy with the shape, I gave it a coat of PVA glue to seal it all in, then off to the hardware shop, because I needed some plaster of Paris. 
This stuff is really easy to use and all you need to do is just add a bit of water to get it to the consistency you want. Now in my case it was like a thick cream. And just a hobby brush gave it a nice even coat over the whole base. I do recommend do this in small batches because the Plaster Paris actually hardens quite quickly. This stuff is actually bringing everything together and starting to look like a terrain. Which is what I wanted it to do. Now, even though I mentioned I was trying to think ahead a little bit earlier, I kind of forgot to put a battery compartment in there. So, pulled out the hot wire tool, marked out roughly the size I need, and chopped out a big square out of the base. Would have been far easier if I had thought of this earlier. Now back to black again for the whole base. Now I want to give it kind of a granite finish to the actual terrain. So, you know, kind of make it feel a bit hostile. So I gave the whole thing a nice, good, thick coat of black. Then back to this primer once again, and I sprayed it directly down to give me some shadowing here. So the bottom areas remain dark. With the base color all blocked in, time to add a bit of detail. And this time around, I'm using a very thin down solution of this green paint making sure I cover every single square centimetre of this and then wipe most of it off with a makeup brush once again. You can see the tones are looking really nice, really happy with that. And now it's time to add some more detail I'm using a combination of the Panzer Grey and the light sand there. And give the whole thing a nice heavy dry brush of this uh, mixture. Just trying to bring out much of the detail as I can. Like that. Now in the flat areas of the terrain I added a bit of PVA glue because I'm going to add some grass to those areas. And using some static grass, just sprinkle it nice and evenly over the PVA glue. And to suck up the excess grass, uh, stocking over a vacuum hose. For me it was a bit green, so I used some of this US olive drab just to tone it down a bit. This just adds a bit of a miserable, you know, desolate feel to it. You know, like in the hills of Scotland or Ireland or something like that. Now where it's always mossy and always wet. <laughs> I made some tufts off camera. Didn't do a very good job of these. They don't stand up very well, but they'll suffice for what I need them for. And I've temporarily put the dragon back on there, so I've got a rough idea where I need to put these pieces of grass on. Now, I still need to add a bit more detail around to the terrain, so I found some of this scatter around my garden and just dried it out in my oven. And then I just need to glue it into place. To actually glue it, I'm just using a mixture of white glue and um, water. Now the mixture is 25% glue uh, to water. Now you do need to put a couple drops of dishwashing liquid just to break the tension of the water. So when I use a drip bottle, it just soaks straight into the scatter. And it's right about here I decided I need to add a bit more detail to the actual rocks. So hitting it with light sand. I decided to add a bit more dry brushing just to the edges of the rock, just to give them a bit more shape. And I'm glad I did this and figured it out because um, it looks really, really good. And with that dry brushing, the base was done. So it was time to move on to the next step, which was creating the fire. I'm using some of this Edison filament with a, in, in this case at the moment, it's a three volt battery there. 3 volt battery pack rather but I needed to connect three of these and each one was three volts so the pack I changed to a nine volt version what I'm doing here is 
soldering one end of the filament to a stiff wire. Not only will this wire bring me power, but also work as a support. And with the other end uh, wired in, that's what it looks like. The two shorter filaments are stiff and the long one's actually flexible, so I can wrap it around the wire. And this gives me the section that actually hits the knight's shield. And a quick test to make sure everything's going before I go any further. Now I'm just pushing a hole through the XPS foam because obviously I'm going to need somewhere for the wire to go through to the battery pack. Because that XPS foam is so soft, I can just push it into place. And once I'm ready to commit, I just use a bit of white glue to lock it in. And look at that, it actually works. Now to create my faux fire, I'm using some of these cotton balls and uh, stretching them out so they're really nice and thin. And then with a bit of hairspray, I can then wrap it around and hold it into place. Need to give the whole thing a base coat of this sun yellow. This will be the hot bit of my flame. Now once the paint dries, it does all stiffen up a bit. It's a bit floppy at the moment. And for the outer edges of the flame, I'm using some of this orange fire. A very appropriate color. And again, another quick test to make sure everything works. And to add the final detail to the dragon, I'm using some of this Tarzan grip because it's really stringy and I can use it as saliva on the side of the dragon's mouth. Time to put in place that flame. And because I earlier tested it, the holes were already there, so this assembly was really quick and easy. And a bit of white glue or PVA glue at each end of that flame. And that dries clear so it disappears. And soldering the wires to the battery pack. With all that in place, it was time onto the final bit of this diorama, and that was creating this figure. Now, I couldn't find one that I could use, so I ended up having to make this custom one. And thanks to Boy Lee Hobbies, he actually recommended a site called Hero Forge, where you can create your own figure. Sadly, I wasn't a huge fan of the figures on uh, Hero Forge, because they look a bit short and stumpy. Typical, you know, 28mm gaming type uh, figures. So I found this other site called Titan Craft, and the figures are wonderful. Not quite as expansive with um, options as Hero Forge, but they look a bit more realistic. And this site's absolutely fantastic because you can pick your poses, you can customize those poses, and add shields and armor and spears and do whatever you need to do to get the figure you want. And then you pay your seven bucks download the STL file and print it out. It's really cool. Now the first version I did was I had the knight holding up a shield and he was standing in defiance. Wasn't hugely convinced with this pose so I went back and made some changes and bent his arm. That was version 2. Still not fully convinced because he kind of looked a bit too standy upperish. So I went back, got him to kneel a bit. A bit more convincing, I was happy with that. Still not 100%. Went back and got him to crouch really low behind the shield. Now I was happy with the figure. Thanks to Boilai Hobbies. If it wasn't for him, I probably would have had to settle for something that I wasn't 100% happy with. Time to paint. I'm using these base colours for the skin and a bit of glazed medium. And that just gives it an opaque finish and I can use it to blend all the tones into a skin. And like I said earlier, I like to block in all my colours first before I start de detailing them. For the armour, some of this metallic grey from Tamiya. Now I did do a bit of research to get some rough idea of the colouring that I can use. The pants, some of this dark Prussian blue. And for the boots and belts and pouches, 
some of that brown sand and then I did go over the lines a bit so I had to go back to the Prussian blue touch it up a bit and for the soles and his pants some of that brown now for the detailing some of this light metal for the armor now if you noticed I actually gave my figure a mechanical arm because <laughs> that's the way I think just to make him a little bit different wood grain for his spear is it a spear is it an axie thing I don't know what it is let me know in the comments if you know what it is this stuff's really good it comes up great some of the steel for the detailing on the spear and around the pouches and the boots some of that accent color from Tamiya this time I'm using the brown this stuff is really good because it really brought out a lot of the detail off camera I already dry brushed the figure using just lighter shades of the base colors that I used and with the accent color again but black Now that light metal colour from ammo again for the shield. And I still didn't feel like it had enough definition so I went in with that accent colour black. And for the final bit of the figure, some of this uh, chrome metal from Green Stuff World. This stuff's great, I've used it quite a number of times. It looks really really good once you brush it on. And finally we glue in the figure. And because you people have been so wonderful and stuck to the end, it's time for the hero images and video. Check it out.